The Kenya Air Force helicopter was just about to lift President Daniel Arap Moy out of the State House, a symbolic final flight marking the end of his 24-year reign. Sally Kosgei, the head of the civil service, stood by weeping, quite evidently, bitterly. Thank you very much. I was so angry. If you read Chinu Achebe, you know he will tell you, men only cry if they are angry, not if they are in pain. I was very angry at what happened at the stadium. As if that was not enough, on the way out of the, the stadium, I, it was so impossible to even get into my car whose windscreen was broken from the back and I had to ride with other people. And in that commotion of running up and down, I don't know, somehow I ended up with one shoe and I took off the other one as well. That was something that stayed with me for a long time. I cried for days because all that work that we did, all those trips, all those people I talked to around the world to underwrite that the outgoing president would be safe so that democracy can be safe. It wasn't for him, it was for the country. And then they come and they just... And it was very difficult because after that we had to go inside and as the head of public service, I was actually relegated to a seat over there. Close to five years later, it was a moment full of irony when President Mwai Kibaki had to turn to the very party he had vanquished, Kanu, and the very opponent he had trounced, Uhuru Kenyatta, for help. The National Rainbow Coalition majority that had swept him into power five years earlier had deserted him, and a lonely Kibaki was literally clutching on straws ahead of the 2007 election. Unless Uhuru does much worse than Kibaki, <laughs> Kibaki could easily go down as the one leader who did very badly. Why? Because in his time, negative ethnicity was propelled to the skies. It really became very much entrenched. And uh, this is despite the fact that Kibaki enjoyed a lot of goodwill by the time that he was coming to power. Upanga iyo ishara ya kwamba amekuwa amirijeshi mkuu wa majeshi yote ya ulinzi ya Kenya. But the full meaning of the coming together of the two former opponents was to be witnessed in the subsequent events that ultimately culminated in the passing of the presidential baton from Mwai Kibaki to Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta. Weeks to the 2002 election, a nasty road accident threw the campaign of the National Rainbow Coalition NAC into uncertainty as it confined presidential candidate Mwai Kibaki to hospital and then to a wheelchair. Party leaders fought to keep the spirits of supporters high and the campaign alive. <laughs> Raila Odinga was the undisputable central figure of the NAC campaign that was up against the determined and well-funded Uhuru Kenyatta campaign powered by President Daniel Arap Moy himself. Raila had earlier broken ranks with Moy, walked out of Kanu, 
helped found the National Rainbow Coalition and on the same day, the 14th of October 2002, endorsed Mwai Kibaki for president. The person who, who convinced Raila to support Kibaki was Joe Bomino. I think Joe Bomino had also some personal touch with Kibaki. And because he told him this is an old man. Because you see, the main fear at that time was that majority of the people thought that Uhuru was too young. Because he was just about 40 years old. And they thought that Moi was going to use him. Because the biggest fear was Moi himself, that if now Uhuru wins, and Moi is using Uhuru, he will fix them. The issue of a single candidate was mooted and discussed, but no agreement could be reached. Then I now remembered that we had tried this in 97, we did not succeed. We tried in 92, we did not succeed. And I saw that we were not going to succeed even this time around. Because people would just talk around and around and say, next time, next time. And yet on that particular day, Khan was going to come out with a, a candidate. So when we went to Uhuru Park, uh, we handled the meeting in stages. Uh, but each time people were saying, we will come back in two weeks' time to tell you whom it is. But then um, uh, I just tested the waters um, by asking Bananchi if they would approve of Kibaki uh, as a candidate. And of course, uh, I said, I see if that is what they were waiting for. They showed the back Kibaki torture. And, and uh, from there onwards, now we had the momentum. Um, it had the effect of uniting the opposition under uh, uh, one leadership. Remember that Mwai Kibaki, I want to say from hindsight, his becoming president in 2002 had a lot to do with Raila Odinga. I think we have to admit that. The moment Raila said Kibaki Tosha, that statement was a game changer in the politics of Kenya. Moi had played also a very dangerous card by nominating someone from Kibaki's own community. And you could see already people who started to run away from Kibaki going the other side. People like Mzee Karume ran away. People like Mesumea Stephen Dichu ditched him. So you saw that there would be an exodus from Kibaki, the other side. And um, that would be dangerous. And Raila's and NDP's entry into Kano. Remember they had a coalition with Kano uh, during the ninth parliament, which culminated in a walkout of the Kanu Delegates Conference with a chunk of Kanu. I believe without Raila in Kanu, the likes of the late Saitoti and JJ Kamodo, who walked out, and many, many others who walked out of the Kasarani Conference, may never have walked out. Raila's entry into Kanu and being disgruntled over the choice of the flag bearer led to that walkout. Raila came from the opposition with an independent mind and 
you know, decisiveness of walking out. So I believe his walking out, leading the walkout on Kanu and Moi, his proclamation of Kebake Tosha, realizing that if the opposition went disjointed, Kanu was going to come to power again. That was a game changer and Mwai Kibaki became president of Kenya and the National Rainbow Coalition came into power. A highly impulsive politician, Raila had instantly rewarded the euphoric crowd at Uhuru Park with Kibaki's name, but had in the same breath annoyed other potential allies. Those kind of arrangements where there is no formula of arriving at a, a, a singular, a, a democratic formula, then I'm not a, a party to autocratic arrangements. An angry Nyachai pulled his Ford People Party out of the coalition as partners formalized their agreement with Mwai Kibaki as a presidential candidate of a united opposition front. A memorandum of understanding setting out a power sharing arrangement among leaders and parties forming the coalition was signed. In the arrangement that made Kibaki president, Raila was to become prime minister. We had very extensive negotiations uh, at the Nairobi club. And in those negotiations, first uh, Kibaki was forced to agree that we would go for only one term. And um, secondly, that the power would be shared. It was going to be a coalition. Uh, power would be shared on a 50-50 basis, including the, the cabinet. Uh, and that uh, uh, there would be consultations in uh, major appointments in, in government. Um, so uh, that we would work to change the constitution and promulgate it within 90 days of the uh, assuming power. Okay, so those were all put in the, in the MOU. There was an MOU. I think the difficulties of implementing that MOU were some of the challenges that came back to haunt NAC. Some of the positions that had been uh, drafted in the MOU could not have actually happened without changing the constitution. They got into an MOU that I didn't believe in personally. I, <laughs> because I thought that, uh, uh, I, I didn't think that sharing a government would work very well. As, and it turned out to be so, that indeed, the, the, the back, there was, we had not done enough groundwork to ensure that uh, a grand coalition could work without ethnic tensions. Mimi NAC won the election handily, winning both the presidency and control of the National Assembly. But like the biblical Tower of Babel, NAC was a house of many colors and voices, as illustrated by the chaotic inauguration of the new president and its aftermath. I've never seen so many people charging crowd of uh, worked and uh, for the first time in a public rally I looked behind to see in the event of uh, you know stampede how we get how we get out of this place I just looked behind to see the escape route it, it was that it was that frightening and the the most humiliating point is um, of course is when they started throwing some, some matope to, you know, to the president, uh, Moi, when he was coming. People who took the protocol were people like Mwenje and the Fred Gumo. Fred Gumo, <laughs> they are now two over as members of parliament from Nairobi, and they don't know the politics of state protocol and so many other things. So it was really chaotic. It was an but ugly scene which was taken over by, by the, the uh, I would imagine, the enthusiastic uh, uh, crowd. We can only describe them as enthusiastic crowd because I don't think it was official sanctioning. The crowd just took over. 
the invitations were a hazard because um, imagine that the you know the after the election they wanted the president's one minute you know it was it was hurried so civil servants were not allowed to do the protocols and everything they were not allowed i felt like a character in uh, in the in the bolshevik revolution who has been thrown out of the, the house and they are criminalized even if they have done nothing. Immediately after the inauguration, wrangles began in NAC over issues ranging from the pre-election agreement to cabinet appointments. When he announced the, the cabinet, it was completely uh, uh, different from what had been agreed. We had given uh, 11 names and we only got as LDP seven, seven uh, as opposed to 11. And uh, they gave the other side uh, 16. Then those seven, uh, two were not in the list that we provided, although they were from LDP side, but he had chosen them himself. He left out the names which had been provided by the party. There were ministers who were supposed to be like special ministers in the beginning. And that's the group that formed the summit. These people actually were given a selection of their portfolios. They selected what portfolios they wanted you know, to man. Saitoti selected education, Raira selected roads, public works and housing, Ngiru selected health, Kalonzo selected uh, foreign affairs, Awori selected home affairs. So there was, that was a very, those were like the senior key ministers. And uh, they were at that time expecting to continue with some sort of uh, a summit arrangement within the cabinet, which was not possible. Because constitutionally, you are creating a tier which does not exist. There was a certain amount of dishonesty among those who supported him, in the sense that virtually all, of, not virtually, but quite a few of them had wanted to be presidents themselves. So they saw Kibaki as being a compromise, as opposed to seeing him as being the choice leader. There used to be a summit chaired by Mr. Moody Awori. This consisted of the seven who had declared their candidature uh, as members of the, the summit. Uh, but the gentleman who would later become the controller of State House told me that, look, if I were you, I would meet the president as a minister. The summit was there before the cabinet was formed. Now that the cabinet is there, there's no need for any summit to meet. In any case, if it met, who is going to chair it? Uh, so that, that was the, the last, so the summit never met again. I think in the memorandum, he had been promised to be, to be a given prime minister's a job or what. But constitutionally, it was not easy. There was no job for a prime minister in the, in the constitution. And, um, and that, caused a bit, of a, a bit of friction from the very, very beginning. As a result of the raging wrangles, Kenyans had within months made a short journey from being the world's most optimistic people to the region's most disappointed. We in the opposition at that time thought that all bad things will go when Moi is out of power. What we overlooked was that no leader is in it alone, is together with the people around him. Moi left, 
but what we called the Kibaki government was largely made up of technocrats of the Moi era and was largely made up of politicians who decamped from Kanu and Moi to rush to the opposition when they saw the opposition was winning. Even as the leaders united against Moi, they were actually the, the, inside the coalition, they stood against one another. They believed they had ethnic visions and they were going to fight there, to fight. They were going to the government to actually grab for, their, for themselves, first and foremost, and then for their communities. Once you have an arrangement like that, no coalition can stand. It's bound to fail. We had a president who was uh, unwell. And uh, you remember I was, I did not come in immediately. I was, I was appointed peers of security. So and they are also there to play as peers of security. The problem is um, things sometimes don't run as smoothly as they should because there is always misconceptions among various actors at that point. Uh, those who are coming in feel that they have to have the way. Uh, those who are there are like belong to those who are going out. So that, that is normally very frustrating. The first few months saw a lot of uh, trying to age each other out between the kitchen cabinet that took advantage of his not being well against the proponents of the MOU. And I recall uh, some of those in the kitchen cabinet actually feeling as if they were the ones who are being threatened by the calls of implementation of the MOU. I think his absence in those six months turned out to be critical into gluing and holding NAC together. We missed him in those six months. I think had he been well enough, I believe you'd have managed the situation much better than it was managed. To avert uh, a kind of uh, disaster, because most of these members were threatening that we should pull out of the coalition immediately. We should boycott these positions. Uh, we were sent to go and, and uh, meet with Kibaki and raise the concerns of our members with him. As myself and uh, Mudi Awori, we were sent to go and, and talk to President Kibaki. So we drove to State House, but we were not uh, given access at the gate. Honestly, to, to, to be frank with you, that's where I think the Kibaki regime made a mistake. Because uh, somehow, you know, the system failed to see the importance of, um, what do you call it, the central role that Raira and played in the politics and the Mnasit. Because if there was a way that, um, you know, Anjov, a prime minister, was carved at that time in a way, the way Raira, the agenda that Raira was pushing, I think the politics of the country would have been different. The National Dialogue on Writing of a New Constitution became an opportunity to flex muscles for the two sides of the NAC coalition, one side led by President Kibaki and the other side revolving around Raila Odinga. A referendum in November 2005 became a Kibaki versus Raila contest, a contest Raila won hands down. Fellow Kenyans, following the results of the referendum, to survive after what was essentially a vote of no confidence, Kibaki sacked his entire cabinet and left out Raila's LDP in the arrangement that followed. I joined, I joined him on the understanding that we wanted to save the country. Because I said, look, we cannot afford 
to have a friction in the country. At that time, Uhuru was a leader of the opposition. So I, I suggested that we also have uh, Uhuru in this discussion. Uhuru came and we told him the answer to this now is not a member ya party. Ile likulete. It's not a matter ya kanu. Our sisi. Let us have a government of national unity. And uh, then he, of course, he said, uh, how would that work? I said, we, it is only a suggestion we are giving you. Get your lawyers and so on <laughs> to, to look at it. And they worked out a scheme. Then he will, later on, he started asking us, would you like to join us and, and so on. Uh, then each one of us, including Uhuru, we said, you know, we have to go back to our respective parties to get the endorsement. I went to my party, a small one, they endorsed that we should join. Uhuru did not get uh, endorsement of Kano. So he still remained the leader of the opposition. Uh, so that is how we, I, I joined the Kibaki. The referendum marked the parting of ways for Kibaki and Odinga, with the latter converting the victorious orange or no vote campaign into a political party named the Orange Democratic Movement, ODM. The party brought together leaders and communities dissatisfied with Kibaki's handling of national affairs. There was Kalonzo Musioka and Charity Ngilu from Eastern Region, William Ruto from the Rift Valley, Musalia Mudavadi from Western, and Naji Balala from the coast. With the exception of Kalonzo, all these leaders supported Raila's presidential bid in 2007. But the election ended in bloodshed and infamy after Kibaki was declared winner despite early results indicating that he had been trounced by Raila. Francis Mudaura was Kibaki's right-hand man and as head of public service, the most powerful figure outside the presidency. I was with him alone in his office uh, where we were watching the TV, in his office, and we saw the we are following the the, 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 the the vote as they came in. And uh, at one point, you know, if you are with the president and you see things are not very good, you, you try to talk to him to, to see whether we can give him comfort. I don't know, because you, you imagine what may be happening, at, happening in his head. I told him, Your Excellency, what I am seeing here is like the repeat of the referendum. The pattern is very much like the repeat of the referendum because, you know, the country is divided. I asked Raila one day, Raila, Kibaki is the president of this country. Suppose he announces that he has won, what will you do? Because it is possible. <laughs> He said, no, 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 he cannot do that. And I asked him, because to defeat an African president, it's not an easy thing. And you know, when you're in the politics, you must accept some of these things. I asked him personally, and he told me, no, 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 he can't, he can't. I said, okay, let's wait and see. Of course, I told him, despite what you are seeing, when I was consulting with the people who are organizing the campaign, they are saying votes from your stronghold have not come. Votes from your stronghold have not come. Most of the votes you are having now are the minority votes from various places where you are not even, the, you are not, that's not your stronghold. Your strongholds have not come. Then when the strongholds started coming, People started talking of uh, this rigging. With over a thousand people dead and the election results inconclusive, Kibaki and Raila were forced to share power in a deal hammered out by former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. But just as the MOU, mistrust was a constant companion. 
on the PNU side where I was leading, we had been told that on no account should there be a constitutional amendment to entrench the Grand Coalition. So we were refusing completely to have constitutional amendment. If you look at the Constitution, the Constitution is the, because it was amended by the Accord. I think the Accord amended the Constitution. The ranking was the President, the Vice President, and the Prime Minister. This has nothing to do with the power. The President definitely, uh, or the, the Prime Minister was more powerful than the um, Vice President. But the Vice President was part of the Presidency. We accepted the political division knowing that we were not getting the instruments of power, but there could be participation in that government, which would also let the country know that there was no need to fight and hope that everyone can live to actually uh, fight this election another time. Did you and your team get what you wanted in the accord? We, no, not quite. But it was better than the uh, MOU. What we didn't get is to uh, is the portfolio balancing of uh, the, the cabinet positions, which was basically left to discretion, and that uh, gave us a very difficult time negotiating the sharing of cabinet positions with the other side. You're not there to love or like Kibaki. You are there to extract for your side. Did he extract? Okay, assuming he did not extract and he didn't for the ministries, couldn't he have extracted for the PSs? Couldn't he have said, okay, you have insisted that the minister must be PNU, finance. Then the PS must be ODM. He didn't. I told him, my friend, this is not the way you negotiate. He told me, no, Miguna, that's not the way you talk to a president. I say, he's not a president, he's a leader of his party, you're a leader of, our, of ours. As far as we are concerned, you are the president of Kenya, you are the one who was elected. So don't treat the other guy as a president. That's the way you negotiate. When you negotiate, the environment has to be neutral. And you must consider yourselves equal. If you go there because so-and-so is president, you will never get anything. Because then you have to bow.